That is a pressure that myself and I know many other teachers put on themselves. So if you're doing that to yourself, try to let it go. I am a little bit overwhelmed going into this. Day one is always like that for me. Someone else left them in my very first classroom and I have carried them along with me since. I don't know if it's over the top or if it's creative. I'm definitely not the first teacher to do it, but I have lanterns all around my classroom. Progress shot. The desk is just kind of collecting the stuff that I haven't put away. Hello, good morning. It is classroom setup day one. I am a little bit overwhelmed going into this. Day one is always like that for me because I just don't know exactly where I want to start and what I want to accomplish. So I have a loose to-do list in my head and the general start is going to be laying out the desks or I have tables actually and a couple of desks, but laying those out so we can get a feel of the room and then I'm going to make decisions on if there are any other furniture items I want to move before I really dive into more of the finer details of getting the classroom organized. I am at home at the moment. I'm about to drive to school and bringing my children with me today. So we are packing lunches and some activities. I'm also planning to allow them to watch a movie, which I wouldn't always do, but it is a rainy day here. So that's something that's going to keep them a little bit entertained while I get some things done in my classroom. If you're new around here, my name is Brittany. I am beginning my 12th year as an educator. I have taught sixth grade and fourth grade during that time. And at my school, I teach a portion of the subjects, not all of them. I have a partner teacher who teaches ELA and I teach math, science, and social studies, and we share around 40 or so students per year. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a like. It helps my channel out so much. Subscribe, become a member of the community around here and hang out with us. And feel free to share this with anyone that you feel might enjoy it. All right, let's get the kids packed, the food packed, and let's get to school. We've arrived and it is doing an awful lot of raining. I was hoping it would be not so rainy when we got here, but we were able to park close, so in we go. I am loving these sweet decorations here in our lobby area. We've never had these before and they're very cute. We are arriving in my classroom. Why is it this big? Was it I, I think they probably just didn't know where to put it back. All right, this is a first look at everything. We've all got squeaky feet because we are wet. Charlie just straight up forgot her shoes, so that's fun. Okay, here it is. We're gonna make some decisions about where we want furniture and get the lights on. Here's what I'm thinking. Chime in if you think I'm crazy. So my desk was there one year. I don't want it there again. This past year, I had it back here. And I'm not really sure that I want it there either. My thought process on having it there was that I would have easy access to the closet, but I didn't end up going in the closet as much as I thought I would. It did give me a nice little nook and a great way to use this odd space. So that is still a viable option, which I may do. But I'm also considering putting it there like right next to the sink no in front of the tv and i'm not sure actually i think i just vetoed that decision because that's going to be really loud if the kids are watching anything independently and i am getting any work done at my table because i remember one of my partner teachers saying that she had her desk in front of her TV and she really didn't like it for that reason because the TV does get so loud. Okay, so we vetoed that. Glad I talked that through. I definitely do not want it over there. I don't like that vibe. So I think we're going to go with the same way that I had it this past year with the desk in the back. All right, now that we've made that decision, let's start by getting my teacher table back there. Progress update. We have my desk back in the corner where it belongs. I have my fridge and my microwave and a lamp going back there. That is the same way I had it set up last year. So that was pretty easy. The muscle memory there was, uh, you know, fresh. So I didn't have to think too much about how I wanted to set it up and if it made sense. Got all kinds of stuff here that is going to need organizing. I'll pick away at it but we've gotten the general layout of the classroom all situated as well. I've gotten a couple of decor pieces out 
So essentially the messy points or the places where there's still items to get in their places are here along the whiteboard and then along that shelf there. But overall, not too bad. And then it's going to be more of like the fine nitty gritty stuff. I don't even know if the audio is going to take because the kids are watching Ice Age over there. And hopefully I'm going to be able to just strip out that noise and this will be fine, but we'll see. I might have to scratch this whole portion of the vlog. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get this down next so that I can have access to this shelf. And I'm just going to start picking away at some of the little stuff and probably unpacking my classroom supplies up there at the front. Progress shot. The desk is just kind of collecting the stuff that I haven't put away in its um, home. But the shelf is pretty much where it's going to be. I might move a few more things around. My next focus, and I wasn't sure if I was going to get to this today, but I think I'm just like in the organizing mood, organizing of physical items, not really in the mental place to start thinking about any kind of curriculum or anything like that. So I think the next thing I want to do is tidy under here because this is just an area that's not really space that's being utilized all that well and I would like to be able to store classroom supplies in there for easy access. I have all of my manipulatives and things in these shelves as well as some books. I'm going to try having my privacy shields here on this shelf. I previously had them standing up in between um, some shelves or some computer cabinets I had over there and I think that they were just getting mangled so I don't know if laying them down will be better but we're going to try that and then I still just have some stuff up here that I'm dealing with and uh, in the process of organizing under there that's going to give me a place to put these classroom supplies which are up at the front of the room and then this table I'm going to put back over here because that is where my computer cabinets will go again. Those pink drawers are also just full of unnecessary things. So I'm gonna try to re rework that. And then this whiteboard that I seldomly use, I'm, I would like to be better about using it. And so I think I may put it here in front of the um, calculators. We don't use calculators a whole lot. I do love having them organized and easily accessible for when we do use them, but it is not all that often. So I think that this piece would do just fine in front of that. This is kind of my on the go rolling cart station with all of my quick grab items for when I'm teaching. I just got it as a teacher appreciation gift at the end of the year last year. So I haven't fully figured out exactly how I want to utilize it, but I'm just planning. I spend a lot of time up here at the front of the classroom at my stand-up desk. And so I want to have this next to my stand-up desk area so that I just have quick access to items because there are some things that inevitably I need for teaching other than just my laptop, which I could put on the stand-up desk. And so this is a great place for me to organize handouts for the day, markers, sticky notes, all those things that I need to quickly grab. We also do something called Wildcat Pride tickets. So I can have those stacked in there to easily hand out to kids, things like that. And that way I'm not having to go back to my desk area over there to retrieve any of those items. That's more of my small group area. And if I have prep time, then I'm often sitting back there and doing my work from that place. I don't utilize that desk a whole lot when I'm teaching. And then over here, I just have a pile of my little lanterns and a basketball, but the lanterns are just kind of hanging out waiting to be rehung. I have lanterns all around my classroom. Paper lanterns, they are lanterns, but paper lanterns. And I just like the whimsical, colorful vibe of these paper lanterns. I've had them up for a couple of years and a few fall now and again, but overall they hold up really well and I enjoy them. So we're going to get these back up. Some of them are a little more tattered. This one looks pretty good. Uh, oh, that orange one down there under the basketball has some rips in it. You can kind of see. Um, so I might have to let a few of them go, but oh boy, I know I could grab more of them at a relatively inexpensive price if I wanted to. So if I feel like I need more in here, then I may go ahead and do that. But that's my next order of business is just 
I'm gonna move those two pieces of furniture. I would love to get the front of the classroom taken care of and just have like a one hot spot instead of three or four. And that's gonna make me feel like I'm in a pretty good place. So that's my next order of business. And then getting to the cabinet down there because that doubles as taking care of the school supplies. Oh, and also I wanted to mention this because I don't know if it's over the top or if it's creative. I'm definitely not the first teacher to do it, but something I tried out at the end of the year last year was painstakingly writing each of my students' names on a pencil. I have two different groups of students, so I put a red line around one groups and then a blue line around the other. And then each student, oh gosh, a very loud part of the movie. And then each student had a pencil with their name on it. And their task was to turn that pencil into me at the end of our class time together before they switched to the next class. That way we were not having this issue of, I don't have a pencil, my pencil's not sharpened and all of these sorts of things. And it was their responsibility to sharpen their pencil prior to turning it into me and switching classes. And it did work well and we actually hung on to pencils so much better. And as erasers wore out, I just gave them some of those cap erasers and as they used up their pencils and they got too short to be good for them to be holding, of course, I replaced them. But we were going through significantly less pencils by utilizing this annoying at first to set up, but then a relatively simple strategy. So I'm going to go with that again this year. And then I also rubber band them. So I'll put like one class in a rubber band and the other class in another rubber band so that I'm not having to hunt through all these pencils trying to figure out, oh, no, this kid's not in here right now. Yep, this kid is, that kind of thing. That's a waste of time. So that's my strategy, and I liked it, so I am going to do it again this school year, but I've not put any names or anything on them. I just have them ready to go. Things have to get worse before they get better. Uh, let me just really like give you a, a full view of Oh my gosh, look at that chaos. That's, that's a lot of stuff. I'm gonna get back to it before I think about it too much because the more I think about it, the more overwhelmed I'm gonna get and I'm in a good groove right now, so I need to capitalize on that. Oh my word. Here is the after of day one. I'm very pleased with the progress that was made today. So I got all the supplies out of their boxes at least and out of the front of the room. This table here is really the only thing left that I need to deal with and I just don't have the steam or the motivation to do it today but this is just general supplies that have come in and then I still have my lanterns to take care of but otherwise things are looking pretty good. I need to uh, adjust that cord but I don't think I'm gonna do that today either. And then I have a couple of posters I would like to hang over there, as well as some stones that I've had since I was in my very first classroom. And actually, I didn't even purchase these. Someone else left them in my very first classroom, and I have carried them along with me since. But I like their sweet little messages, so I think I'm going to place those around the room. I haven't had them out in this classroom yet since I moved into this room, so I will be happy to have those back. And of course, I found them when I was cleaning out under here. So let's take a little jaunt or view of life under here. I had to adjust my mic, it was about to fall off. So things are looking a million times better. I have several different buckets here for school supplies or extra supplies, I should say. That's generally the vibe of this whole cabinet is just supplies that I'm gonna need on a regular basis. So tape, pencils, whiteboard markers, folders, notebooks for the kids, crayons, colored pencils, that's our extra uh, electric pencil sharpener. Those are hard to come by, so I am coveting that. Our other one is still working, so I'm gonna keep that one tucked away for if it dies. This side is looking great now too. We just have some like math manipulatives up in here. Over here, it just that whole shelf is kind of math manipulatives and that game item, and then my personal items, and then we have true games and puzzles here, and then more math manipulatives there. And those are math manipulatives that I just don't want the kids to be um, grabbing without 
knowing what their purpose is or how to appropriately use them. So that is why I'm keeping them in that cupboard versus over here where our other manipulatives are. And the closet, the closet is looking a whole lot better. Wow. I don't love that bucket there in the front, but it's like my prize bin, but I don't actually use a prize bin. It's a little bit complicated. I'm toying with the idea of a prize bin. And so I just keep collecting items and placing them in that bin. Oh, let me step over it in case I decide that I want a prize bin. So the, nothing about these shelves here really changed. It's mostly the stuff along the floor that changed. So over in this corner, there was a cardboard box that just had like really random stuff in it that I evidently never truly unpacked after switching schools is what it looked like. So that got unpacked. I took the time to put all of the border supplies that I have into this box. And that was quite the process. And now it's getting stuck over here on the lip of this lawn chair. We all have lawn chairs. That's why I'm keeping mine. And then I had gotten some science supplies donated to us from the middle school, and those needed a home. So they are down there now. All of my extra buckets and baskets are back in that corner. And that is really where things changed was all along here on the floor. I have a stool here for if I need it out in the classroom. I've been standing on chairs today. That's not really what they want you to do. So I do have a stool. And then I have this little mini stepladder in here because without it, I would never be able to get to anything up there. So that's the general vibe of the closet. It's never really going to be perfect. That's not really my goal. Progress over perfection. It is functional now, which is what matters. Everything here on these shelves has been organized and situated, and uh, everything over here is all cleaned up and off the shelf. All the decor pieces were put out and in place. I've got my kids' little grab station set up here with hole punch tape. I need to get tape in the tape dispensers, staples in the stapler, and then here are some bookmarks as well as some hand sanitizer. And I already told you about moving the privacy shields down there. We also have a variety of these cushion-like things. They have spikes on them that are not hard, but also not soft. They're pretty firm. And I don't think that I would find that comfortable to sit on. But I had a whole basket full of them when I came to this classroom. And I felt like, why get rid of them? So I've had them for a couple years. I don't know how much I actually love them. They kind of become more of a distraction, but I feel like that's the case, the potential case with any tool like that, any like wiggle seat type thing. So maybe we just need to introduce them in a different way or better, but I hold on to them because I'm just, I'm not ready to get rid of them. So when I come back for day two, the goal is going to be to get all of the supplies situated, sorted, and out for the kids. This is kind of the kids station over here for quick grab items that they need, scissors, colored pencils, glue, all that. So that area is gonna need to be fully set up and most of that stuff will go over there. Get my paper lanterns up, hang the posters over there on my table as well as put my rocks out. And, oh, I need to replace some sections of lighting in here. All up there. Um, all the stinking way to there. Unfortunately, that whole strip is out. A good section around my board is out. And, uh, nope, I was thinking it was out there, but I just don't have one there is what happened. Uh, oh, there, or there is where my other strip is that's out. And I love those lights. We normally do not even have these lights on in our classroom. It is off just like that one. And that is how we prefer to do things around here. It just gives it a, a better feel that lighting is just nicer for learning. So that's the plan. I'm also going to need to get some more light bulbs for that lamp. And then this lamp, I don't know. It stopped working toward the end of last year and I need to figure out if it's actually dead, if it just needs a new light bulb, or if it is something more intense than that and I just need to get rid of it slash replace it. Not really sure. 
But that is how things are looking around here. Oh, we've got it like this twisted and all kinds of stuff. There we go. So that's how things are looking around here though. Way better than when we walked in this morning. And I'm just so proud of myself, so pleased that I took the time to really dive into those cabinets, shelving areas there and the closet because those are the places where nobody really sees it because I keep it closed but they were not functional. And the idea of going into another school year without those spaces being functional was just ridiculous. I went so many years without having a closet. And so I feel very badly if I kind of take advantage, I guess, of the, of the concept of having a closet because I truly went, let's see, I went nine years of my career nine years out of my 12 with no closet. This will only be my third year with a closet. So I really just feel like I need to love it and I need to, I do love it, but I need to respect it. That's what I'm really trying to say. Need to respect it. So that's the plan there. I am gonna try this year to not just leave that welcome back a banner up for the entire school year. Last year, I left it up for the entire school year, and then I also left it up for the entire school year before that too. So that has been up for a solid two full years at this point, and now it is appropriate as we get ready to go back to school this year. But my, oh my, I am gonna try to not just leave that up all year. I love it though, and it just fits with the classroom so well, so I don't know. And then it's like when we come back from a break, I'm like, oh, look, welcome back again. But clearly it's got, I guess that could be teachery vibes, but kind of fall-esque vibes with the coloring and such. Really not winter vibes when we would come back from winter break or spring vibes when we would come back from spring break. But, you know, I'm kind of uh, pushing it a little bit there. But it matches the general decor that I have going on around our classroom so well. So that is a wrap for day one. It was a very full day, a very busy day. I don't know how I feel about this entirely, but my children watched two full movies while I was taking care of things around here. But honestly, it was a rainy day, so I normally would have had them go spend some time out on our playground here, but that just wasn't a possibility today. So as I was saying, I normally would send my kids outside to play so that they're not just spending three hours watching movies, but with the rain and whatnot, it was just the best option for today, and I wouldn't normally do that every day, but it served its purpose today, so we're gonna call it a win overall, and that is a wrap on setup day one. I got a lot done today. I think setup day two will really be it for me, maybe setup day three. I'm not the type of teacher who takes a long time to get their classroom in order and ready to go. Instead, I like to come in and just a couple of bulk rounds and have it done. Typically, I take just one day and that is all I've done for the previous 10 years. And I think maybe my first year or maybe this summer, okay, this summer I moved districts. I did invest more than one day, but otherwise that has really been how I operate. I just come in, spend a good chunk of time, get in the groove and get things set up and organized. I'm feeling a lot better. I was getting a little bit anxious because I've been seeing a lot of my coworkers on social media that have been saying they've gone into school or when I've seen them at different things around town, they've been talking about coming into school and working on things. So I, I'm not behind by any means, but I was just starting to have that general feeling. So I'm glad that I came in and that I've gotten some things situated and the classroom really looks good and I feel good about the classroom and about the space that I'm gonna be welcoming these new children into. So I'm not sure when I'll make it in for setup day two, but it will be before we go back to school at the end of August. Here where I live in Maine, that is the timing for us for going back to school. 
So end of August is the cutoff for getting everything ready to go. I guess it truly doesn't have to be perfect for the kids to walk in the door. That is a pressure that myself and I know many other teachers put on themselves. So if you're doing that to yourself, try to let it go. Try to stop that. Remember that the classroom does matter and the general vibe of the classroom. But what matters even more than that is how you interact with those students and how you start to form relationships immediately once they are in your care. So even if the classroom is not perfect and 100% the way you want it when those kids start joining you, it is okay. It does not mean that anything about your school year is going to be any less than you want it to be. All of your efforts still matter and will make for a wonderful start of the school year for your students. So that's that. Set up day one in the books. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It really helps out my channel. Share it with anyone that you feel might enjoy it. And if you haven't already, subscribe. I would love to have you here as a member of the community that I am building at The Bees Business. Thank you for joining me as I set up my classroom today. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.